The exercise period for the men from death row. A half hour each day, around and around, and then back to their cell to wait for tomorrow. Eight men awaiting execution. Murderers, thugs, incurable enemies of society. Seven of them wait with a stolid acceptance of the inevitable. The eighth does not, he cannot. He doesn't understand the events that brought him here, and neither does anyone else. But they happened. They were quite impossible. But they happened. You see, each of us is brought up from a tiny child to believe and to rely only upon the evidence of our five senses. Now, that's the trouble. If you were confronted with something that seemed to occur outside those five senses, some event, you'd be inclined to say, it's my imagination impossible. But if that something was so important that your life depended on it, William Cooper, murderer, did not reject it. He couldn't. His death depended on it. And the bizarre events that provoked Cooper's death sentence, they began here, in the attractive midtown apartment of bachelor Fred Summers. They happened because of Kate Maxwell. A widow. Hey, careful with that good whiskey. I'm steady as Gibraltar. Mm, I'll say you are. I don't know why you never let me help you. I make a pretty good salad myself. <laughs> I know why you always keep inviting me to dinner. Because you hate my cooking, right? Right. Right. My dear Kate, well, perhaps you'd better sit down for this. I've quite a bit to say. Well, go on, sit down. I decided to record this because I never seem to do a very good job in person. Maybe with just me talking and you not able to answer back with your peculiarly female logic, I'll get somewhere. Now, as I calculate it, to date, I have asked you to marry me at least 347 times, conservatively. And you've never said no. But, well, although you strike me as an otherwise bright young woman, you've never said yes either. Now, just in case they've escaped you, my qualifications are as follows. Health, clear of eye and sound of limb. Habits, steady and dependable. Prospects, first rate. Intelligence, way above average. And, as you can see, modest to a fault. I am, in short, a good scout. Trustworthy, loyal, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. A prize catch for any clean-limbed, straight-thinking American woman. Darling Kate, I... I put one crucial question to you most seriously. And to answer it, you've, you've got to search your heart deeply, honestly. Is it me or the idea of marriage? No, not don't answer yet. Hear me out. I, I can't wait much longer. I love you. I adore you. But the way things are, it's tearing me apart. You keep saying you're not sure. After all this time, not sure? It's not me you're not sure about, Kate. I suppose I could figure out a life without you. And if I were sure you were able to fall in love with anyone and didn't love me, but... I really don't believe that's it. 
And I think in your heart you know the real trouble as well as I do. Katie, I'm fighting a ghost. And that's not a fair fight. I'm not going to ask you again. I mean it. You're not being honest with either one of us. Look, Kate. I'm sure he was a great guy. And I'm sure your two years of marriage were perfect. But he's dead, Kate. You don't know that he's dead. Nobody does. Well, face it. The Navy didn't say missing, they said dead. They said presumed dead. I don't presume it. You don't? You don't or you don't want to? Look, when a man goes down in the middle of the Pacific, thousands of miles from any land, and they only find wreckage, and three years sure, pass. Sure, sure. Just write him off. Draw a line through his name and make believe that he never existed. That's the thing, isn't it? You think loving someone else, being happy without Jim, is somehow disloyal. It isn't that you don't know in your bones that he's dead and gone. It's disloyal. You're confused, Kate. And your confusion is ruining both our lives. Please. Please, Fred, just leave me alone. Shut yourself off from life. He knew the kind of work he was in and knew it would happen at any time. He must have said as much to you, didn't he? And he must have told you if it did happen, to let go of him, didn't he? Or is it that you're afraid of loving again? Afraid of losing again? Please, Fred, leave me alone. Please, just leave me alone. Okay. You are alone. All alone. Crying? Well, not on a beautiful night like this. Did something frighten you? I bet I know. You're, you're lonely. Oh, this kind of a night with, with the moon going in and out behind clouds. It, it sort of gives you a funny feeling inside. Restless. You know what I mean. Lots of lonely people. <laughs> I'm lonely too. Please. <clears throat> I, 
going for a walk or walk in the park. I'll walk with you. <clears throat> but there's no one here but us. The, the whole park is empty for us. I know. I've looked around. You don't want to be lonely on a night like this. Well, you're not afraid of me, are you? I wouldn't hurt you. Really, I wouldn't. Please. Please, just leave me alone, please. Don't be afraid of me, please. Please don't be afraid of me. You are scared. You are! Just the two of us. Uh, nobody to cause any trouble. It's perfect, don't you see? It's perfect. Uh, that's my girl. That's my girl. Go scream. It's all right. There's no, no one to hear it. No one to enjoy it with us. Go on, scream. You're sure you could identify the man if you saw him again? Yes, of course. And the description of the clothes and so on, you don't want to change any of that? No. Why should I? Well, your story of how he suddenly turned tail and ran off, well, it doesn't quite add up, does it? What doesn't add up? I, I told you everything yesterday, just the way it happened. Well, have you seen the papers this morning? No. Well, a woman was attacked and murdered in that park last night. Oh. We thought you might be able to help us. I'd be glad to. Okay, Jerry, we're ready. picked up a few suspects. I want you to have a look at them. All set? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay.
All right, hit him. That's him. Which one? The one with his hands in his pockets. All right, Jerry. All right, Cooper. You stay where you are. The rest of you off the stage. Hey, now, wait a minute. I didn't do anything. You're sure now? That's his voice. That's the one. Hey, well, what are you trying to pull? Where do you want him, Mike? My office. Any objections to facing him again? Not here. All right, fine. What is this? What are you doing? Don't even get to talk to a lawyer before you start all this stuff? You'll get to see plenty of your lawyer. All right, let's get on with the Inquisition. Well, the newspapers are going to hear about this when I get out of here. Oh, you believe me. Did you ever see this young woman before, Cooper? No. That's funny. She's seen you the night before last in the park. She couldn't have. Well, why not? Because I wasn't there. Where were you? Taking a ride in the country. Alone? No, I had a girl with me. What was her name? Uh, oh, I know. I, I picked her up. Well, we'll go into that later if we have to. I don't think we will. Look, uh, what are you going to do with my, my hair and fingernails? I, I don't understand that. You still insist you've never seen this young woman before? Look, I... I don't think you got a right to do this sort of stuff until I first talk to my lawyer. Well, it's her word against yours. Under the circumstances, I don't expect yours will be very good in court. What circumstances? You just picked me up taking a walk in the park last night. Well, she says she saw me there the night before last. I don't understand what you're trying to prove anyway, even if I admitted I was there the other night, which I don't. Well, it won't matter one way or the other. I was just curious. We'll have a statement ready for you to sign in a few moments. Statement. Oh, look, you've got nothing on me, but because there's just nothing to have. Well, the dead woman had a few of her murderer's hairs clutched in her hand, and there were deep scratch marks in her face and her throat. Your hair and the material from your fingernails are under the microscope in the lab for comparison. You can't prove anything from hair. Then why are you lying about being in the park the night before last when she saw you? I saw, I, I, I was in the park. Oh, she's a pretty girl. I made a pass at her, so what? <laughs> a guy that was with her would have put the finger on me sooner or later, anyhow. What guy? The guy, the guy that was with her. Well, you didn't tell me there was anyone with you. There wasn't. What is this? I was alone. It was a game or something. There was a big red-headed Marine there. A, a Marine? What are you talking about? Oh, come on, lady. He was standing right next to you. He was six foot three or four. Easy. What kind of routine is this? Everything fits. Took him. I didn't do anything. Wait. Let's go. Wait a minute. Anybody with? Please. Please, why are you lying? Just, just tell me why you're lying, please. Please, just tell me why you're lying. I don't know what you're talking about. Look, I told you the truth, lady. Tell me, lady, leave me alone. Leave me alone. What now? Mrs. Maxwell wants to ask you a few questions. Who says I've got to answer? Please. Now, the man you say you saw beside me in the park. Oh, lady, are you on that again? Please, please, just look at this picture. Yeah, that's him, the guy who's in the park, so what? No, but that's my husband. I don't care if Listen, that's your husband. Listen, his plane crashed in the Pacific three years ago and he's dead. I don't know anything about that. All I know is that he was there in the park. Him! Can I go now? Well, why not?
Jim. I read about you tonight in the paper. I tried to reach you. Finally, I, I tried the police. I talked to that Lieutenant Walton. I kind of had a feeling you'd be here tonight. They tell you what happened? Yes. Cooper swore that he saw Jim. Do you understand that? No, dear. There's so many things I don't understand. The important thing is, what does it mean to you? I know now that he's dead. Fred, he saved me. Why didn't he let me see him? You didn't see him, perhaps because you didn't need to see him. But save you for what, Kate? To go on living a life all alone? No. No, not alone. Not anymore. A man appears? and disappears. He is seen, and then vanishes from sight. Now that word sight is a curious one. The fact is that medical science doesn't really understand how our optic nerves cause a picture to appear in our minds at all. None of us is really certain whether our so-called hallucinations are real or fancied. For if we dismiss everything we can explain, it would then follow we would have to dismiss the very fact of sight itself, wouldn't it? At any rate, somehow, a dead Marine did appear in the park when his presence was desperately needed. How? Well, there are so many things in this world about which we know only that we don't know. <laughs>